Welcome back to Switch to Linux, and it looks like Linux Mint 22.2 has been released. And as I always do, I like demonstrating how to do the in-place upgrade on my uh, one of my production laptops. So this one is my laptop that I keep on Edge, and so that means that it's always running the latest versions of everything. Uh, I'm always using this one to test. Then, of course, I have um, other computers I hold back to uh, the 21 branch, and then I have my streaming computer that I update once I know everything is running smoothly. So uh, what we're going to do here is I want to walk through, you know, basically the releases here on the release blog post. They actually do have the information for the release notes, what's new, and even your upgrade instructions. So all that is over here inside of our uh, Linux Mint. There are a bunch of new features, um, so let's just uh, have a look at these really quick. So a lot of these, this is not a major, major change, so it's not, uh, not likely to cause any real issues to upgrade. Of course, I generally would recommend many people wait a little bit before... Um, uh, upgrading. In the, my case, um, I'm confident enough, and since this laptop here really is designed for this, I'm going to run ahead. Uh, the sticky notes is really their their biggest highlight. Uh, not sure why it's not an application I use, but we have rounded corners on the top now. Uh, the biggest function, though, is that the sticky notes are now compatible with Wayland. So if you are using Wayland, you can use those sticky notes. There is an, also an app that allows you to manipulate sticky notes. They did change the login screen, so it is a little bit cleaner with some blur effects in there on your login screen. And uh, this application, I get community strikes when I talk about it. So uh, have some new, uh, new uh, viewing modes, so uh, I'll let you read about all about that. We did mention briefly in a couple past videos the uh, fingerprinting. So if you do have uh, a fingerprint uh, reader, you can lock pseudo commands and a few forms of authentication. Not disk decryption, but a lot of things once the system's already running, you can set those up. Uh, inside of this, of course, it is optional like other things. And uh, also libadweta was patched to work with the major Linux Mint themes, Mint Y, Mint X, and Mint L themes. So these will work. And they have also forked libadweta uh, in order to uh, ensure compatibility. Uh, it's called libadapta through the X apps. But uh, where they can, you can use libadweta, and this means that they were actually able to upgrade a few of the apps to use the libadweta versions, uh, which had been previously held back. We have uh, accent uh, color support, and there's X apps, and then a little bit of artwork. And really, they do mention here that uh, there is a hint of blue in the theming, which we may or may not see because I'm not running the default theme in here. I'm running, um, I'm running a. Um, uh, uh, the gray theme of the simple uh, method of doing it. So uh, they did make some improvements over the software center. The biggest one is a button over here to show you what is the difference between installing a flat pack or a system application. So really good for new users to help understand a little bit more about that. And this is compatible until 2029. Now, as far as the upgrade is concerned, the first is have a system snapshot. Uh, I do not generally personally run the system snapshots. If this computer goes down for a couple weeks because I got to fix it, I don't care. Um, and it's super easy to get it reinstalled. And I've never had issues I've not been able to resolve. For most people, I would recommend using snapshots. I've actually even uninstalled TimeShift from this computer because when I bought this computer, the hard drive was so small that uh, it was like... I couldn't even run snapshots. I've actually since upgraded it to a uh, full terabyte, so I could re-enable that and set snapshots, but we're going to do the upgrade without having to do these snapshots. Uh, but if you something does go wrong, you want that. So if, uh, if I do happen to break something, well, I'm, needless to say, I'm not going to be bugging people to help get it fixed. I'll just fix it myself and then, hey, another video. How'd I do that? Uh, they do mention this. Of course, one of those is the updates. I literally just upgraded everything. What in the world? Like, uh, all, okay, I literally just updated Flatpak a few minutes ago. Literally, like, I just finished updating them and then i plug the system in to start doing do not tell me we have flat pack updates already 
Maybe that was just the old cache wasn't upgraded on the update manager. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But you do want to make sure um, that everything is up to date on your system. There you go. Okay. There, there you go. Now, now I'm less concerned. Make sure everything is up to date. So I did spend an hour today, made sure everything was all up to system up, you know, uh, upgrades to system upgrades. I did upgrade the flat packs. The other thing that uh, you want to take note of is um, we might have an issue here with our PPAs. There are two PPAs that I actively run on this. One of those I really have to, uh, and uh, one of those uh, I don't really have to, uh, but the previous version of OBS Studio without using the PPA was problematic, so I was running it here. Um, the KeyPass XC, last I knew the version inside of Ubuntu does not yet support pass keys, so I do run the PPA for that. During the upgrade process, it may want to disable these. I'm not seeing anything here in the upgrade instructions. Just be aware, if you've added PPAs, we might have an extra step here. I don't know. I'm going to leave those enabled by default. Likely what it's going to do is it's going to disable the PPAs, run a system update, which is going to downgrade these to the repository versions. It's going to run the updates, and I may have to come in here and turn those back on. So we're going to see, and I don't really know because uh, we're doing this video as I'm doing it. So with this particular type of update, if you remember from our laptop when we went through the 20.3, which is end of life, up to the 21.3 on my other laptop, you had to do that through a terminal application. Well, in the minor upgrades, these are always available inside the update manager under edit. So there's the upgrade button right here. And so this is going to launch our updater here. So this is going to walk us through all of our steps. Before I get to there, I'm going to show a couple last things here. Um, and then last step is rebooting it. There are a few little things. Obviously, if you do not have that up there, make sure that you are running the latest uh, uh, Mint upgrade information. If it's not available, it could be not yet in your mirror. So switch back to the default Linux Mint mirrors in order to do that. And then they do mention there was this really, really weird situation. Every once in a while, you might get locked out. So we have the instructions down to uh, get here. Basically, you're logging into a... Uh, separate terminal window, and then you are going to kill the cinnamon screensaver. Mostly that happens if the screensaver turns on. So I'm going to prevent that by making sure I wiggle the mouse every few minutes just to make sure that uh, nothing happens. And they do have a command here for Mate as well. So uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and we will close our web browser here, and I'm going to proceed to run through this. So next is the release notes. And uh, we have already read through the release notes for it. And uh, we just looked at the new uh, features. And now looking at uh, this, I understand the risks here of upgrading. So let's go ahead and check that box and hit apply. And now we're going to need to enter our password. Since this is a production computer, it's definitely not my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. So now this is just going to walk us through a series of steps. And uh, this is, again, a minor update. So it's not going to be a huge, um, uh, a huge thing here. So let's just go ahead and let it do its thing. And uh, I'm going to pause the video and we will come back for each and every question that it asks us in between doing these. And then we'll see was I safe for those PPAs or not and are there any other steps I needed to do. There was no, <laughs> like nothing changed. One thing I am going to check out of sheer paranoia every single time I run updates. I'm going to make sure the boot folder is not full. So, okay. So that's good. So now we are good so now i just need to reboot the computer and uh let's just go ahead before we reboot the system we'll go into our system info here and you can see it's already is reporting we're at 22.2 so there you go we are uh, already there but let's go ahead and reboot the system and uh, allow everything here to uh, reset itself to the current versions and uh, we'll see what that looks like. All right. So I'm not sure if it's as clear on the video, but uh, you can see uh, the blur effects in there are actually fairly noticeable and uh, really nice. And uh, yeah, we do still have uh, all of the same means there. So let's go ahead and get logged in. 
course, since my capture card is capturing my second screen right now instead of an image, you can't see me log in there, but uh, that's what we're doing. And so now we are here at uh, uh, logged in. Let's just go ahead and uh, I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at those software sources and get logged in over there. So you see that that uh, did not have any impact. And let me just pull this guy up here. And so you can see pass key support down here. So yes, it did not change my um, key pass XC. It did maintain all of that. And let's have a brief look at our system settings here. So here's the themes. I believe this is the default theme. So we'll just go ahead and have a brief look at what that looks like there. So yeah, a little subtle blues all listed throughout. I personally prefer this uh, gray theme though. That's what I'm using for me personally. Just keep it nice uh, nice and simple. I'm using the mint Y. All right. So once again, we have a very flawless Linux Mint upgrade, very simple path. And uh, you can see right now that we've upgraded. There's just a couple of uh, updates that we want to uh, run. So I'm just going to go ahead and install all those updates here as we wrap the video out. So as far as uh, different changes, there's not a lot of huge changes inside of this version of Linux Mint. So if you're already running 22.1, uh, I think you're going to be reasonably safe going to 22.2 .2 already. Uh, I'm going to test it on this laptop again for a little bit. Of course, you might want to wait for a few days. Just make sure that there's um, no issues, no bugs that show up. So far on my end here, running this on my um, on my one production laptop, uh, I'm not seeing any major problems here. So everything is looking pretty good. So uh, thanks once again, Linux Mint team, for another flawless update on another boring in-place upgrade. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this type of content, leave us a like and a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you've not already subscribed. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.